trying to get one of those ugly sweaters, and UPS just let me down. I couldn't get there in time. But Apparently. Uh, I just yeah. missed the memo completely. You like, missed the people memo. were ordering them yesterday. I was like, wait, what? What's going on here? Oh, <laughs> that's a cool sweater, Moses. It happens. But look, what we do have for you is a really great matchup here. It's Optic Gaming and Hellraisers heading into it on train. A really important matchup for both teams. If they win this, either one of them, they're going to be able to make it through. And look, honestly, I actually think this is quite a smart uh, way for Optic to go. I think they might have done a pretty good job with the map here because Hellraiser has already played this map twice in the qualifying. That means they will have had the demos to look at, whereas Optic have only played Overpass. So Hellraiser's have much less information to have looked at. I think already Optic are going to be in a good position. They're starting on the T side and already have control of Ivy, of Brown Halls, and Hellraiser's. Are they going to... I think they're moving into A main right now. This is really interesting. They're going to go and be very aggressive. This I really like. They want to try and upset things here. If there is a setup for an A kind of execute, if anybody's by A main, that's what the Hellraisers are hunting for right now. This does kind of uh, smell like an informed play coming in here. We can't forget there is a sixth member for Hellraisers. They actually have a very active coach in Junta who believes that it's the coach's role to prepare the team, but you can't really do anything if your teammates are going to get headshot right off the bat. Angel's already gone. And now Optic actually have a man advantage pushing onto the A site. This is a really big problem for the CT side. You lose a man like that early on after such a big play. Dead Fox coming in with a great headshot. Follows up on Rush. He tries on that play. Out of bullets at the end. And Naf is going to be able to take him down for his own double kill. But now they're in the B bomb site with the bomb. This is the plan along. And look at Stannis Law. He's actually going to plant way out in the open. That could have gone horribly wrong if Zero had been there. Still a three on three here, and they're ready for the retake. Stiko going to be taking down Nafly. That's a very important kill. And there's Zero taking down Tarek. All on Stanislaw. He picks up the USP, and there's plenty of bullets in the chamber right now. We'll see if he can pick up this 1v2. He kind of has to. They do have no actually kit picked up right now. There's a great headshot coming in from Stan. Now it's a one on one zero right around the corner. He has no time. He has to find this kill immediately. He's going to go down. Triple kill for Stanislaw, and that's how Optic win the first pistol round. You got to give it to Dead Fox, man. He did the same thing on Overpass. Multiple headshots versus NIP. Just wrecked the NIP push. This time, he can only get two. But still, it actually keeps his team in the fight. You're thinking this is it. Hellraisers, they've got this in the bag, but they just got whittled down one after another by this player right here, Stanislaw. The 1v2 in the end to win it. And well, Optic, I think they, uh, that's, it's actually speaking to a bit what Thorne said. You know, he thinks that their T side is going to be a bit too powerful. If they're going to hit headshots like that, Hellraisers are going to be hard-pressed to hang in this match. Well, speaking of Hellraisers, they picked up two scouts. I love this. I don't know why people went away from doing this. And Dead Fox is going to hit a headshot on Rush. That's such a great start. And I wish people would do this. I would even support three scouts if it's possible. Stiko going to be going down next in line, and Angel will fall to Napfly. Zero coming out with the CZ-75. They're doing a bit of damage, actually. It's down to a two-on-two, -two, and they're getting the kill. Bondic picking up Stanislaw, and suddenly Tarek in a one-on-two. Without the bomb, he's sneaking out. He's on 31 health, and he doesn't realize there's a guy right behind Electric. He picks up the rifle. Now he sees it. Bondic never turned around for it. Dead Fox, he's already got the double kill. He can definitely close out this round. And he's got full HP with the scout as well. One shot onto Tarek, and Tarek is dead. But Dead Fox, he might be gaming himself here. He's actually going to cut him off. They're going to stomp into each other, but maybe they heard some noise here. Tarek backing off just in the nick of time, and he's going to be able to plant safe for A. And he's already in position to try and cut off Dead Fox as he comes around the corner. Dead Fox, is he going to be ready for this with the USP? Of course he is. There's the clutch. Dead Fox, he is so good for Hellraisers in this qualifier. It's nuts. They just can't, they can count on him for days. In the match versus NIP, he, keep in mind, he's only been with the team for a very short period of time, a couple of weeks. This guy's already becoming the star player for Hellraisers. Yeah, absolutely amazing. And again, the pressure is really high. This is not some random online game. They are trying to qualify for a major tournament. They're playing in a big studio here in Atlanta. There's a lot of pressure on you when you're playing like this, but he doesn't seem to be affected by it at all which is very, very good news for the Hellraiser squad. That ties it up at 1-1. One, one. And Optic, they got the bomb plant, so actually look at Tarek. He's going to be buying into this round. It's so tough for Optic as well. I mean, this is something that you've noted throughout the uh, throughout the major qualifier, is that they've been so good at picking up pistols, they pick up another pistol. That's like six out of seven pistols now for Optic so far on the maps they've played, and yet they lose in the second round. I think we got our hopes up a bit too early there, or perhaps the caster curse kicked in, but uh, they need to get back into this, and that's why Optic are going for the force buy here. It was a 1v1. They know that Hellraisers don't have that much of an economy to play off of, and so two AKs, two Tech-9s, that can do some damage here. 
Oh, it definitely can, especially if they could find that one opening frag. Oh, the Hellraisers do have some pretty good equipment, though. They haven't just stuck on the scouts or anything like that. They are taking up some grenades behind it, so... Let's see how this goes. Default setup for Hellraisers. No trickery coming in, but... A good shot on Tarek. Drops him down to 28 health. Now down at Ivy, and actually Bondi gonna go for a fight here first, and he's gonna go down afterwards. They are trying to push out. Mixwalk got the one kill, but it might not have been enough here. Now it's up to Stannis Law again to try and clutch it. Tough scenario, but he does have the gear, and he's got the bomb on him as well with 50 seconds left, so this is enough time for him to work. Gonna be guessing with that smoke, kind of misses it, but he will get it down, so just to give him some room to work with here to maneuver. But unfortunately for him, they're going to wrap up behind him. He's expecting somebody to be rotating through connector, through Z connector from the B site. And Stanislaw is going to go ahead and actually somehow work his way back to the perfect position. He spotted both of them now. He has the information, but Angel's down to one HP and he needs to get that kill standing. He has to turn this into a 1v1. If both players survive for Hellraisers, they should be able to trade against him. And Angel has a kit as well. So that's going to force a reaction out of Stanislaw here. The bomb tap comes through and Stan looking to find the kill, but he's going to turn away just as Angel comes around the top the corner. <laughs> Over enough time with that kid and Hellraisers, they survived the force by the gamble doesn't pay off for Optic in the end. I just want to point out that there was a different way that Stanislaw could have played that position because you can shoot under that train. Mm -hmm. And even better, you can see the the sort of the red name pop up when you actually you sort of scan under the train. So he didn't actually have to do anything other than play C Connect. So that would have been an, an interesting way to go about it. It's also kind of impressive. You know, they tap the bomb and he actually doesn't do anything. He just waits it out. That's um, some pretty good intuition. But it didn't work out. So 2-1 is going to be the scoreline. And in this round, Optic, I think just gunning for a bomb plant. They have certainly the grenades for it. Just no armor or really anything else. So. We'll see if they can succeed in getting that bomb down. They've already thrown a lot of the grenades out in the A-bomb site. That's keeping, so far, four people on the site. And they get into B and get the bomb down. Angels rotated back. That's the aim. Stanislaw has still got a smoke as well, so you can get that to block off connector. But they're holding close zero. He is at risk from the P250s. That's the one danger here that he has to face. Two flashes still in play for Optic. And so they can try and catch him off guard if they do go for the rush. And Molotov going to go off to block down the lower ramp. And Angel caught out of the open, regains his vision just in time to trade one for one. But then Stanislaw with the drive-by, P250 to the face. And they will get the bomb plant optic holding close against the pistols has ended up costing Hellraisers. Look at what Nafly is doing. He actually rotated back in through Pop Dog. And now he's going to try and see if he can make it work. Tarek going to pick up the kill on Bondic there now. Three versus two. And Nafly, he's still the linchpin right now. Hellraisers kind of have to go for a retake. They can't just give this up. They're wasting a lot of time. Oh. Naf going to be a bit too aggressive, and I'm not sure why. He should have clearly waited for his teammates then, but it looks like Hellraisers, they're just wasting too much time right now. Dead Fox is the one with the kid. He's down. Now Stiko has none, and he's got no time. He might as well run away. He's going to go for the fight here. A rush will take him down. That's another round for Optic Gaming. We just keep trading back and forth right now. Tying it up at 2-2. Very interesting. Yeah, this is all over the place. We've had a lot of matches start off like this as well, where it's just gone back and forth. Four spies versus four spies. Eco round wins. I mean... And again, assuming one of these teams actually makes it to the major, the, the fun part for me is the fact that however deep they make it into the major tournament, the story sort of begins here, right? You can craft the story from, from this qualifier on. So if it's Optic Gaming, and I think many people expect that Optic will eventually make it into the major tournament, their run will have been quite a long one just through the qualifier and, and trying to get all the way there. So um, I'm really interested to see how they play train here. And so far, it's been really aggressive. They're playing like they don't have a lot of respect for Hellraisers. This is kind of what we saw from Optic on Overpass versus Nip. Same sort of story. Started off really close, trading rounds back and forth in the first half. But Optic have shown now that they have the, the mental will, basically, to carry through. When it gets into grind time, when you're going tip for tap like that, they actually can lock it down and just start getting rounds together, start chaining them together. That's the real risk that Hellraisers run now. They have to go for a hard eco, but they absolutely, in the next round they can buy, have to come back at Optic and take a round. If they start letting Optic run away with this, I don't think Hellraisers are going to be able to get back into it, barring some crazy kind of star performance from Dead Fox. Yeah, and the problem with, I mean, the, the issue with some of his star performances is that we require an AWP. So if they keep being low on money, how is that going to be working out? You know, they, especially on the CT side, that's not going to be fun in the long run. We're down to 40 seconds here. And again, I'm so sad. Hellraisers, you got the four-man stack at B, and no one's bought a flashbang. Just why not do that? Train is one of those maps where the potential to set up that sort of five or four-man stack with a flashbang is so huge, and yet nobody does it, ever. 
which is disappointing. Well, that's awkward. I can't really be helped. Doesn't really uh, pan out anyways. The smoke was blocking off connector, so stand is locked. It's like a semi-spin bot, half spin. <laughs> Rush point blank. He's going to catch him coming around the corner. Fairly easy stuff here. Does get shot in the face, though, so he is at risk. He's going to have to back off. And Nafli will step in to pick up an eco kill of his own. Two for him in the end. Rush with two, and Tarek with the one kill. Optic pulling ahead. Three to two now in the lead. T side train, but here we go. Hellraisers, they have the money. It's just that Dead Fox doesn't have the money for an off. This is a bit painful here because Mixwell, if you want it, yeah, he's got it. He, or it's not Mixwell. Nafli is going for the AWP on T side. Yeah, and I mean, I feel like they swap that out, sort of, how, whatever they feel like. Yeah. Well, just, I mean, I kind of like that about him. He he's, doesn't feel any over ownership over that position. He will just give it up if, if someone else feels like it, or if Nafly feels like it, I guess. And, oh, Nafly, a shot that probably he shouldn't have missed. Giving a second life there to Angel, who was almost going to get robbed. And that was the early aggression. Now they, they pretty much have to slow it down and just see what happens. Mm -hmm. There we go, the trade back. Probably going off a of spawn, basically, with that AWP. So Mixwell now going to have the op and play, and still so much utility here for Optic. They've done a good job of actually getting Hellraisers to throw out some nades early on, so it's just a matter of making more noise like this. But look at the setup here from Hellraisers. Two players holding Pop Dog. That's not actually very common. We don't see that too often. Puts a lot of pressure on Dead Fox over by Alley because he's on his own. If anybody comes through, he's going to be in a, in a bit of a tricky spot. It's also interesting because Stiko, who's looking at main, is going to be so hard to flash, whereas you could probably end up pop flash on Bondic, mm -hmm. but Stiko's already turned, so that could be... I, gotta, I would like to see someone try and go down. Give, give us a chance, Rush. Do it for science. See what happens. He's setting up for the pop flash. Is he going to actually go behind it? The, oh, the Molotov? I think that was failed a little bit. He, he probably did want to do something with it. Instant smoke to cancel it. Nafly goes down, but so does Stiko. And now Bondic out by Electric with two health left. He actually gets the Molotov in. And that's going to lock out some of the players. They run through Stanislaw. Doesn't care about the Molotov there. And now there's zero left alone here. He's coming in all the way from CT spawn. He's just going to run away. Not even want to try it. That's... Maybe not the worst idea. That's so sick from Optic. That's the kind of play that is going to get you rounds is when you know what needs to happen. You have your teammates already pushing out through A main. If you get slowed up at Pop Dog, your teammates are just going to get slaughtered. They see that smoke, they don't hesitate for a second. They push right through it at Pop and start to get into the fight to support the players coming out from A main. Optic showing no fear and more importantly, just playing as a team at that point. Very sick stuff to collect a very valuable round here for Optic. This is going to put them up four to two, and Hellraiser still can't seem to get the money together. They can't get their feet under them right now. It's going to be another round of pistols for them. Yeah, and what's really frustrating is just because of how this this sort of first half already has played out. This is only the third loss in a row here for Hellraiser. It's not even like their their round loss bonus is massive at this point. Um, yeah, it's just really really weird, isn't it? Because if they, at least if it had been four straight in a row for Optic, then Hellraisers would have been in a slightly better position in, not in this round, but in the upcoming one, they could, they could have got a little bit more out of it. Seventh round coming up, and Optic already off to a good start here. Dead Fox is doing well enough. Stiko's doing well enough. Um, and on the other team, it's Tarek, actually, who's stepping up. This, is, this feels like yep, a tactical timeout used here by Hellraisers. So that was a point that I was trying to make earlier that I really loved. That there was an interview done by HLTV uh, just a couple days ago with Junta, the coach standing behind Hellraisers. He's got a lot of history, but what was fun to see is that he thinks that the Valve ruling is actually quite fun and interesting because he feels like it puts more pressure on the coach, that it doubles down on the responsibility that it's the coach's responsibility to prepare the team, that if, if, the, co if the team isn't prepared and fails, it's entirely the coach's fault the way that he sees it. So his role right now, he's got a bit of a buddy system going with Angel. Angel's calling in game, but the tactical side is very much divided between the two, and Junta's very involved on the tactical side as far as coaching is concerned. He's definitely not a cheerleader. We'll see if he can do enough in terms of this one timeout. I mean, it is a pretty sort of uh, compressed amount of time you have to try and deliver any kind of information to your team. You know, you got to give that input, something that you have maybe noticed, a pattern you've noticed that maybe your teammates haven't or your, your team hasn't. Not a lot of time to discuss anything with, so we'll see if uh, this short timeout, I mean, they don't have any weapons apart from the one that Zero saved. So, probably the timeout is more for the upcoming round. They already tried the aggression in A main. Train is a map that allows for aggression in a lot of different places. So, I'm wondering if they're going to try more of that. If you notice, they've had, in, for all these seven, six rounds, they've had a completely passive hold on B. No one's tried to push up or to look in there. No one's tried to push the ramp or anything like mm -hmm. that. So, there are potential changes that can be made here to the Hellraiser's defense. Certainly. 
Yeah, the, as far as the aggressive options are concerned, Train is one of those maps where CTs have a bit of room to work with. That Fox getting a bit of a flank, but he gets shut down by Naf. And, well, Zero gets boosted up and connected, but that's not really going to work for him. Angel does recover the M4 off of his corpse. It drops into his hands, literally, but there isn't a whole lot that he can hope to do here 1v4 with no Kevlar. Well, just 1v4, period. Even with Kevlar, he'd be in for a bit of a tough ride. So, quick plays coming in here from Optic. I mean, they obviously know exactly the kind of situation economically that Hellraisers are in, and they're, they're just getting those feel-good rounds in. Show no respect. They're, you're up against pistols. Just bully them and make it even more difficult for Hellraisers to get into it in the next round when they'll be able to buy. Yeah, I'm looking at Dead Fox. He's got nearly 3,000, so he should be in a fine position in terms of buying an AWP and everything else that he needs. Um, he's going to get another 2,900 or something like that on top, so I think he'll be all right, but... Um, Question is, what can they do with it? Because once you have the EWP on Dead Fox, I mean, it depends on what he wants to play, but a lot of players who play off will, will be less inclined to be aggressive with it. You know, they'll try and, and play it a bit safer. So I would like to see him push Ivy with it. Yeah, he plays Ivy with the op. That's a great place to be. His Guardian loves to play over there. And I mean, it's just like, why not? Go yeah. camp out alley, alley, rather. And you can even go for the aggressive peaks towards T-Spawn as well. Revolver, there yeah. it is the pistol shot, and it's time to go. Yeah, that's what I mean. I, I want. I, that's what I want. I want him to be aggressive with it. I want to see him try and get that first kill and just put put some pause into uptake here. But he's going to be playing very defensively. Nice grenade on Mixwell, though. That's not a bad way to get started. Mixwell, not that flustered, just waiting. There's only the smoke that's going to make him fall back eventually. And a very slow round already from uptake here. They're not trying too much. There is a danger here for Hellraisers because it went so poorly for them yesterday versus Godsent on this map, right, where they might be trying to overthink things. That's the trap that you have to avoid. If you try and change up too much of your game, your players aren't going to be comfortable. They aren't going to be trusting and having that confidence to go and take the fights, to go for those aggressive plays, etc. They're going to be too locked down. So something to consider here. He did actually win a few of these duels yesterday, Dead Fox, with the alley sniping. So And that flash is not effective. And so he does have a chance to get that angle. And there it is. There's the shot. Nicely done. Takes down Mixwell. So a man advantage here for Hellraisers. <laughs> That's a really good shot. That actually looked beautiful, didn't it? I thought, because here's what's weird, right? Rush put up two flashbangs that would have allowed Mixwell to get into position. Mm -hmm. um, but because of the position that Fox was in, they kind of didn't do that. It just you know, went back around the corner and that was it. I thought Rush was going to jump for Mixwell instead. Exactly. Because um, that's that's a very common way to peek. You know, you have your rifle to jump in front and then the all peeks behind. But Mixwell thought he could make his way over. Now they're a man down. And even worse, they're down to 23 seconds. Here, Dead Fox picking up a kill on Rush. It's looking very good for Hellraisers here in this round. Three versus five and 16 seconds. Dead Fox, third kill coming in for him. Getting a bit of help from Bondic. Stanislaw alone. And he actually gets two big kills. This is a problem for Hellraisers. I don't think uh, Stanislaw's going to win the round, but they really can't afford to give up too many rifles here. Great round, though, and a triple kill for Dead Fox. Yeah, the monster. He's in play. He is, I, I mean, to me right now, he is so important. He's a, the integral player, the key player for Hellraisers. In the pistol rounds we've seen so far throughout these best of ones, he's shined, shown. <laughs> Even if his team has struggled to actually win pistols, he is still able to have an impact. And then once he has this op, I mean, he's hitting shots left and right. Definitely a key player here to keep an eye on. But yeah, we're going to see. I mean, Rush isn't even in position to kind of jump across, is he? He jumps away, and Mixwell just decides to be spontaneous. So... Yeah, tough call there, but it ends up costing Optic in a key round. Five to three, Optic still in the lead, but Hellraisers can breathe a sigh of relief. They didn't let Optic just run away with it just yet. The thing is, that jump from Mixwell would have worked if, if Dead Fox had been playing on the other side, on the but right. he didn't, yeah. Now they're going to be going for a quick push out into Yard. They've got that classic wall of smokes that's down, and Mixwell with a really good Molotov landing up at the sniper's nest there just to try and force someone out. But they didn't actually bounce off. I think maybe it did. Bondig is still up there, so a failed Molotov. That's not how you want to go about it, and they've lost Stanislaw and Mixwell in the meantime, and Zero in position to catch Rush if he tries to jump down. That's such an easy shot to hit, even if it's a mid-air one. We've seen it time and again. Hellraisers coming back into it. We had the tactical timeout. Now they've mentally adjusted, and they're winning this easy double kill for Angel, and now the defuse is going to come in, obviously. Hellraisers making it to 4-5 here. It's like Christmas come early for CTs when you're retaking. It's like, oh, there's AKs everywhere. Yay. Yeah, Get all your presents. Get all your party favors. I think we're going to get the Kobe nade here. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that actually is just really well done. That is dead on. Can't get much better than that. Nicely done. 
five to four. Hellraiser's one round closer to tying it up. And well, I mean, obviously with how well those first three, the, that three round chain for Optic went, they still have the money to buy. They had the bomb plant with the bonus money in the last round as well. But now is where their money starts to get a bit tricky. They desperately need to get a bomb plant in this round, at least Optic, if obviously if not win it. But for Hellraiser's, they've got to be feeling good now. Things are starting to fall into a place. Dead Fox definitely hitting his shots. And I am curious to see. I mean, so far he's been fairly effective just holding the, pa the angle passively, but will he go for the aggression at alley? Will he try and go for some kind of push towards T-spawn? Yeah, I mean, it's always, it's really difficult and it, it's, it has to be intuition based when you decide to switch it up. That's a really powerful grenade. I think he actually almost was a bit of collision with him there and that dropped him down to uh, 42. What I'm concerned about is where did all of Hellraiser's nades go? Look at this. We're a minute 15 into the round and they have four flashes left. Yeah, that's definitely mismanagement because they had the money to buy them, so they would have had them from the beginning. Oh yeah, they had a full buy. That's a, a big a big misstep there for Hellraisers, and they're going to need them now because the push is coming through into Ivy's He's going to pick up the one kill, Dead Fox with a shot, and he falls back around the corner. Rush takes down Bondic. How's he going around the corner? They're going to bring in Tarik coming in from Pop Dog. That also drops the bomb, though, and Angel trying for the spray here. It's a two-on-two -two with a pretty big health lead for Hellraisers. They still have a really good chance of taking this round. And as soon as Angel spots that bomb, this is it. This is where they kind of need to tighten up. Zero, a little bit worried about the flank, but he's going to be able to watch towards Alley. And Angel, he's covering the bomb from the bomb train. This is a terribly difficult situation for Optic to find themselves in now. As it comes down to Hellraiser's making a mistake, Mixwell hoping exactly that somebody's going to push aggro, trying to look for info, and that he's going to get a free kill out of it. He might be able to take out Angel here, and he does hit the shot. Angel's just out in the open. And that's, that's the issue right there, is that now it's all on zero in a 1v2. He has the angle on the bomb, and there is no smoke to block him off. The Molotov is going to be used to try and buy some time. But this, now how does Zero actually get in here to retake? One versus two. Flashbangs are all used, and he turns the corner just as Rush walks out. That's going to be a triple kill for Rush, and a one round for Optic Gaming. Hellraisers, they can still buy, but still, that's a tough round to give away. Here's what I don't understand, because you're right, they saw the bomb. If it were me, I would have put Angel in Zero's position. Then I would have had Zero flank back to Pop Talk instead, because they know someone has to go and pick up that bomb. Mm. And they, I mean, you had time to do that. They knew where both the players were. I think they were tunnel visioned on sticking on that bomb side. Why not just use that extra time and run back to Pop Dog? Yeah, this is where you remember, you know, there's tremendous pressure on these players right now and in these in these snap decisions. It's the beauty of CS. It's almost like there is no wrong decision technically, but there is uh there they're all different manners of interpreting interpreting and playing out each situation. But still, yeah, that's not an ideal sort of scenario for Hellraisers because they spend all of their bank now going into this round and often get up to a sixth round. So that pressure is just going to keep ramping up here on Hell on Hellraisers. Dead Fox with the full buy and his AWP. Luckily for Hellraisers, he's got that in play still. And he is actually changing it up. I was wondering in the last round, he does seem to really favor Alley, holding towards Alley with that op, but now he's over towards B, upper. So I do like to see that op moving around a little bit, hoping to catch somebody on Optic off guard. Yeah, he's very passive, Dead Fox. It's hard to criticize him for it because it's been working so well, but... I still wish he would change gears at some point and just try and catch them. Bonding and Angel are going to slowly walk back from that pop dog area. They don't feel comfortable being there any longer, probably because they've run out of grenades. So they realize they can't extinguish any, any molotovs or anything. They sort of have to fall back eventually. And now they are going to be all the way behind the smokes. Optic are putting in there. And then these, they are, these are fairly classic smokes uh, between the two trains and also by the electric box. So they're going to buy themselves some space to work with. My issue is, again, we're really low on the clock, down to 25 seconds. Tarek, that smoke is even going to evaporate as he makes his way through. They need a kill right now. Optic, otherwise that bomb plant's not going to happen. Bondic picking up two big ones, but then comes the return. Mix one and Tarek, and suddenly two on three here. Bomb plant, where is it coming from? 10 seconds left. They haven't even cleared the bomb site yet. They really have almost no chance of doing this. Stanislaw going to end up going down. Angel to find a double kill, and Hellraisers will win the round. They they could have won this 2v3 if they had a minute left or something, but mm -hmm. 10 seconds. Not enough. Definitely not enough. Well played by Angel this time. He, he definitely made up for the last round because that was excellent. Denying the bomb plant, playing it safe, exactly hiding himself. 
until the last second there makes it basically you know an impossible situation for Optic to get it done. Six to five. And now I'm curious to see if Optic, exactly with the Tech Nine Force Buy, if they want to go B. They haven't really gone B. They've gone B later in rounds as a shift based on results. But are they going to just set up for a straight B rush and just try and run them down? Because there's only a single player here right now. It's, it's only zero alive on the B site for Hellraiser at the beginning of the round. Yeah, you know what? For a meme, it doesn't get used nearly enough, does it? The B-Rush, you know. Uh, gotta keep that alive well, somehow. Let's wait. Hellraisers are, you know, their T-side <laughs> is coming up next, right? So I'm expecting it. I want that, you know. Just sometimes someone has to sacrifice a little to keep the memes alive. Angel and Zero are inside of the B-Bomb site. And they do have some pretty good grenades to try and stop this. They've made a good adjustment as well. They should have an idea of where Optic are, and they aren't playing close this time, where they can get rushed down by the P250s, etc., because that was an eco-round win for Optic when they went B with the pistols. It's, it's now a matter of just trusting in your retake and in your nade superiority. Instant rotation coming up from Bondix. Nico and Deadwatch not far behind. And now Optic, can they find any kills here? Because Zero reigns supreme from on high. He picks up a kill on Rush. Yeah, this is just fine for Hellraisers. They, they're playing this round very well. Stanislaw and Mixwell not going to be able to win the round here, just not possible any longer. Stanislaw, oh, that's a stunning headshot, taking down Stiko. Man, Stan has really woken up today, but um, yeah, I, the, the key point is you were also sort of pointing out, if you, if you, once you see the push coming to that B bomb site, if you're the two people playing B and you say, all right, let's fight to stop the bomb from going down, mm -hmm. you risk the idea of dying and giving up the rifles, and suddenly they could be playing a five versus three with rifles, you know? It's much better because they had the grenades, just wait, retake the bomb site, and win the round for sure. That's definitely the solid choice. It's what cost them one of the last time when Optic went on that eco. Tarek got an AK that was dropped by either Zero or I, I can't remember if it was Angel, but regardless, he picks up an AK that somebody was holding close with and takes off somebody from rotating over from A with that AK, right? You know, that's the risk that you run. But it looks like Hellraisers, after that round, they're going to go ahead and slow things down. J during these timeouts, this is when Junta can actually have a conversation with Angel. And what's fun, actually, another little tidbit, is that these two players know each other very well because apparently they used to play on the same team way back in the day when Angel was first starting out and Junta was the in-game leader. And they so they have a very similar way of looking at the game. Junta basically brought Angel up and then Angel carried the flag forward. It's it's interesting because we don't see this very often that a team will win a round and then do the timeout. Mm -hmm. You know, usually a reaction to having lost too many rounds in a row. So I like it, I, especially if this works. It will obviously make Hellraisers look uh, really clever. So. I kind of, uh, I'm kind of interested to see where this will go. Obviously, it also does buy Optic a chance to, to you know, to talk and, and relax a bit. But still, we'll see if this change of pace is going to make a difference here for the Hellraisers team. If they can win the last three rounds and make it 9-6, we still got a game on our hands for sure. It looks like it's gonna, they're going to try and make it out. There's so many grenades on the Hellraisers side, they should be stopped. This should be very tough, you're right. The smoke is just clearing now for NAF as well. There's the flash a second too late, but it's not really going to matter in the end. They are going to get up onto the site. No! Oh! The spray coming in from Angel eventually gets caught by Stanislaw, but that's fine as far as Hellraisers are concerned. They, they keep four players alive. They're going to keep that money building, and now they're in the lead 7-6 on CT side. Optic with no bomb plant but still enough money for a full buy across the board. Only issue is that Mixwell t chooses not to go for the AWP. He would have had to go for a glass cannon if he went for it, so no AWP for Mixwell. Full AKs across the board. This could speak to a very quick-paced kind of round coming out here from Optic, however. 7-6, 14th round. See what they could come up with. The flashbangs are out pretty quickly, and Tarek is actually going to be out there pressuring the yard just to try and maybe see if he can buy and draw enough attention to himself that the three-man push down Ivy is going to be working up that much better. He needs to be very active here, but the flashbang is making his life very hard at the moment. And now they got three people out here. Again, I think Tarek has to be the one to, to initiate this fight so that the three-man push Ivy can work out. If he's just going to be playing passive here, there's a chance they're going to get slaughtered when they get out there. He's moving up on the train here. Now he's being very active indeed. This is great. And a headshot on Bonding to start it off. Tarek tapping away long range. It's taken forever, but he kept the kill on Angel. That is a really long fight. Stiko dropping the bomb down at Ivy. He's smoked off though and still hiding behind it. No one wants to fire it. It's going to be Stanislaw going first. And Stiko, he can't win that fight, ends up going down. Wow. That's just very well done from Tarek. <sighs> hate to throw Angel under the, under the bus there, but that's. Uh... That's a key error. That is a key error. You have all day to get the kill on Tarek there. If you get the kill on Tarek, that allows you to stabilize somewhat. And then you have the crossfire on Ali. Brutal, brutal play there from Tarek, though. He manages to keep his cool and calmly tap him away. Scream would be proud. And now, well, 
Optic are going to tie it up 7 7. Yeah, and Dead Fox. Best he could do is probably save the AWP. He's hiding in a somewhat unlikely spot. But um, they already have Naf fly out looking. Rush, I don't know if he's going to fall back, Ivy, but mm. yeah. They have the money, I guess, to buy in the upcoming round, but Bondic doesn't have that much and Angel doesn't have that much, so Dead Fox would kind of like to use the bank to buy for those two people and then have his own AWP still. So actually saving it is kind of important right now. It looks like he's going to be successful. That's not at all too bad. Um, essentially, what happens that round, and, and the reason why it's interesting, when Tarek is coming out of here and they've got another player here, the three men that are coming in from Ivy, they need... They, they're going to throw smoke this way anyway, but they need for anyone who's holding here, sorry, here and or here, to be looking this way. They want them to be looking at Tarek and maybe Pop Dog as well, because that smoke is going to take care of any CT players playing here. But if Tarek doesn't make any noise, then they're all going to get sandwiched in here. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty good play for Optic. They actually played it very well. And the fact that Tarek just gets two kills is even better. But just the fact that he's the one starting the fight is what I really like. That shows they've got some basic communication down, which it sounds easy when you sort of, when you can pause the game and look at it, but it's really hard to do in the game. They have to be a little bit careful here again, Hellraisers. But there's been so little action on B. I'm watching the B defense right now. I mean, Nafli for once is actually going over into Brown Halls for Optic to make a little bit of noise to start getting some map control over here. So that might throw Hellraisers for a little bit of a loop because this really hasn't happened much so far in this first half. So Zero and Dead Fox. And Dead Fox once again playing up with that op. He's going to be hanging around. A little bit of a spot there from Angel. Takes quite a bit of damage, though. So he's got to be careful. But nobody's in position to trade him for main right now, apart from Rush. But Rush is holding passive because he doesn't know if anybody is in main. It's a bit of a standoff between both of these teams, and we tick past the minute mark now going into the last round of this first half. Optic have shown us already multiple times that they don't mind pushing in the last 30 seconds. They feel comfortable doing that, and it's only backfired on them once when they had that 2v3 with 10 seconds left. This time, a bit quicker, 40 seconds left, and Bondic with the early fight taking down Rush. Gonna go for Stanislaw as well. I have no idea how he wins that fight. It almost takes down Mixwell. Bondic playing really well at the moment, but Angel and it's also fallen in the meantime. So three on three, even with a health advantage here. Hellraisers, they need this round desperately. Optic already have a very good first half on their hands. If they get up to eight rounds, I think it's going to put a lot of mental pressure as well on the CT side. Dead Fox taking down Terry is a great start. He was the one with the health anyway. Now Mixwell in the corner flashed and isolated. Where's the backup? Nap coming in. He gets the one kill. Mixwell can't follow it up. And Dead Fox will clean up that round. We're another triple kill. He's top fragging at 14. And it will be 8-7 in favor of Hellraisers. Barely, but still a bit of a win at the end. Just, I mean, chaos rounds again. Just so chaotic at the end, really, where Optic, this is where they kind of excel. This is how they've seen some success is their ability to be explosive and just run onto sites. But I have to give it to Bondic. If it isn't for Bondic getting the two kills there for Hellraisers, I don't think Hellraisers are able to come back into this round because they weren't able to get a pick early on to stop Optic from getting onto the site. It was just Bondic doing so much work with Dead Fox obviously getting the triple afterwards. So between those two players, that round, it allows Hellraisers to have an edge going into the next half, but it's such a fine margin. I mean, 8-7 going at the T-side train. It, it, that's not a very solid scoreline to be starting your second half with if you're Hellraisers. No, definitely not. And especially because you brought this up when we started the game, the rec the pistol record for up to gaming is so overwhelming that there's a, there's a good chance historically that they will end up picking up the pistol round here. And if they do, then things are looking really bad. I mean, it's remarkable. Optic are six out of seven on pistol yeah. runs right now. That's a that's a crazy scoreline. That is super consistent. Now, I mean, there's something weird that was going on here because the, the the players they are just uh, they are just all setting up right now. But I'm I'm wondering. Oh, we got a tweet coming in here. That is is that from an airport or a bus? Oh, Metro. Oh, Metro. Excellent. That's some sick. real dedication. I love it. That is sick. Training them early to uh, become pro players. Well done. Uh, Test trip. I mean, is that that's Danish, isn't it? Um, it could be. Could, could very be. well be a Danish last name. Here's what I'm. Uh, here's what really worries me about Hellraiser's CT side so far. They played pretty much that whole half mm -hmm. without having any information placed at all. No one. They pushed once into A main. That was it. Otherwise, they stayed away from uh, the IV push, they stayed away from the Brown Holes push. They just played reactively, just waited for Optic to get the grenades in, and I don't think that's good enough. I think you need on train, if, if it's not working, if your defense isn't working, then you need to have more information about what's happening, and they never got it. 
No, it's fun because this is the identical scoreline that they had at the end of the first half versus Godsent yesterday. And Godsent later on, just in the second half, just shut them out. Godsent CT side, Hellraisers didn't, didn't have an answer, weren't able to get into the second half, get things rolling, and they got rocked 16-11. Yeah. So Hellraisers, and there's this pressure on them now that they really have to kind of change up and step up and start hitting headshots. Can't only be Dead Fox, you know, who's running the show right now. Stan going to be falling back. In fairness, though, uh, JW did also lose his mind in that game and just <laughs> decided to kill everybody, which yeah, is Yeah, he had his moments for sure. JW, it was good, man. That We've had multiple moments where we saw some vintage, you know, yeah. perfect JW come out this tournament. Oh, he put God a smile on my face. God sent qualified already. So that's it. They're going to the major. Oh, Rush opening up on Angel. Not the best start for Hellraisers. They need this round. And Tarek, he's going to be falling back. Doesn't take that much damage. The bomb is being attempted right now. It's going to go down, but they're still in the 3v5. These clocks need to come into play, and it has to happen right now. The first engagement on the retake going through. Rush picking up one more kill, and that's all going to be over. Nafly with a double. Rush with a triple. And that's going to be it. A fight for the defuse, in fact. See, Rush is so disappointed. You get those extra points on the scoreboard? Yes. Get those extra points on the scoreboard. It is true. Look at the uh, consistency here on uh, on Optic Gaming as well. I mean, Mixwell is at eight kills, but otherwise it's 12, 12, and then 12 and 11. So they're, they're just all more or less tied up for score here. It's pretty impressive. And it's not like on Hellraisers, there's anyone that's... I mean, Zero's a bit behind, but it's not so much that you would say, you know, he's the reason they're, uh, they're not doing too well here. It is a tight scoreline. And there was a bomb plant. Yeah, as far as um, actually getting things going for themselves here, Hellraisers, that's not what they needed. Because they got, they again, how, you know, speaking about how good Optic are with their pistols, yet another pistol to them. Hellraisers have just been failing utterly at pistols. They aren't, they don't seem to be able to pick any up. This was a key thing, actually, when they played against uh, Maus on train, is that they picked up the T-side pistol. And so Hellraisers had the strong start, and they were able to carry over from there. If they don't get that now, I've, I've, I'm really worried for their T-side if they're going to be able to get it rolling. Especially with this format, the, when you're playing best of ones, the ability to win consistent pistol rounds is so important. I mean, you, you're, you give yourself such a big chance of winning the overall game. You're the MVP at that point. Yeah. It just makes your life so much easier getting, I mean, what should be, what, six rounds, basically? Five to six rounds? Every map, that's huge, huge. Oh, Tarek doesn't have a grenade. Actually, only Stan has. They don't have any armor, so I, I oh, he's going to bounce right in the face of Steko and drops him down to half HP. If they had more grenades, this would be fun. Stanislaus is going to get overrun, and the bomb is planted. Still should be a fairly easy round for Optic to retake this. Just because of the lack of armor, it makes it very difficult to stay alive, and they are getting chewed up pretty quickly. Still, this is just a huge win for Hellraisers. They have done a very good job already in this round. Now coming in from behind, Angel! Did he have a knife up for him? <laughs> That's very ambitious. Still, bomb plant, two kills, perfect round. Only a single UMP kill as well, actually. So, very solid stuff. Hellraisers, they kind of dodged the SMG player. Didn't want to give him too much money going into this next round. And more importantly, Hellraisers with two bomb plants. So that's, there There we go. Now we're actually starting, if you're not winning the pistol, you're getting both bomb plants. You're going to have good money going into this uh, next round for the buy. And so you'll have all your options open for you. You'll have the AW, you'll have the AWP if you want it, bit risky, but more importantly, you have nades and plenty of them. So now it comes down to which strat Angel wants to go with here. Something that they've practiced and they know they can get the job done. Preferably something that doesn't involve knifing people. <laughs> I just love it. He saw the chance for it. 9-8 is the scoreline here, slightly favoring Optic Gaming. I don't understand. How does Angel not spend the last $500 that he has in the bank on nades? Okay, never mind. Preston just wanted to get out there and fight with the AK, and he doesn't win that fight, sadly, which means Rush is going to be perfectly happy to sit back. They've got four men already in this A-bomb side. This is a very hard push for Hellraiser to make happen, especially with all the counter grenades coming out. That Molotov in the corner going to maybe lock Sneeko or Deadfox in a bit. But look at Bondic. He picks up two kills. He's just charging in here. Can he get another one? He gets a headshot on Rush. Bondic, a one-man army out in this yard. And now can he pick up the bomb as well? Nafly's moving in right at the edge of the smoke. Bondic should be dead ages ago. But somehow he's still doing the work for his team. And they got over a minute left here. Finally, he goes down to Stanislaw, but a two-on-two two now. What a comeback into the round. Now, though, however, how do you get that bomb back? Nafly giving ground is actually going to give them the opportunity to get over there unless he rotates over towards Alley, and then that bomb is stuck now behind Green Train. That's a bit of a problem if Nafly was actually holding the angle, but instead, Hellraisers, they do kind of luck out due to the timing. Nafly rotates back. That gives the bomb back to Hellraisers. They have 40 seconds to work with here now as well, but look at Stan. 
He's thinking the long con here. He's already going to be rotating around, changing up the angle. The timing is going to work out for him to come out through Pop Dog, and they're just looking to sandwich onto Hellraisers here, onto the site. This could be nice for Optic. If you remember, this is what I was trying to point out yeah. in the last situation we had this two on two. I think it's a really good idea. The one problem is Hellraisers, they just have another model. So they just choose one, but they have another one. So as soon as Stan, if he doesn't get the kill immediately, that could be trouble. He's going to pick up one there. Now a lot of trouble with Zero. He gets the headshot and turns around. He still has the models off. There's no reason for him to fight this right now. He's going to go for the fight anyway. And he hits the headshot through Evox right onto Nafly. Very interesting. He could have played it for the Molotov, but he makes the 1v2 work anyway. And this is Bondic. Obviously, this is really his round. It, it should have been done at the time when, when they pick up the first two kills, but somehow Bondic brings it back. Wow. Unbelievable. And it is hero plays. Feels like with a lot of these teams, they are heavily reliant on individual performance on, on just players coming out of nowhere and blindsiding their opponents. Bondic gets three kills. And in the first half, he had a couple of instrumental rounds where Hellraisers were only able to keep it together because he was getting these double spray downs. So, I mean, Hellraisers, somehow they make it work. Tied 9-9 now. And well, Optic are on pistols in this one. So Hellraisers, they managed to recover somewhat based off of two hero plays from their players. Zero with the 1v2 clutch. Look at this, they're actually doing it. They got Tarek with the flashbang out in yard and everybody else here. So if Hellraisers get deep, deep enough into this A bomb site, by the time they get the first contact, if that flashbang is effective, this could trigger some really good kills for them. I love this from Omtik. Even if this doesn't work, I'm still a huge fan of how this is uh, essentially thought out. So let's see. They're going to be pretty deep in because they will be Mixwell, Rush, or Stanislaw that they'll engage first. Or they're actually wrapping around. Wow, Hellraisers. They're beating this setup with pure positioning. Yeah, easy kill there for Angel onto Nafly, who's turned the wrong way. Now Tarek, he's not even going to be able to use that flash, really. Will be able to trade the kill and take down Angel, but it's still a man advantage here. Rush surviving with one HP. Flash goes out, and it does actually buy quite a bit of time. That was the design flash. You wanted to try and get it right in front of A-Main and Pop Dog. It works. Buys a little bit more time here, but really just the superiority in gear is going to carry Hellraisers through this round. And also some quick positioning there. Quick thinking from Dead Fox. Get that bomb planted over on the B site. Yeah, I mean, the whole, the whole idea is you want them to be sort of deep in the bomb side. You want them to be committed to the A push so that they're sort of all out there and exposed. And mm -hmm. then you just, you, I mean, you, there's no way to design a flashbang that flashes four or five people. Right. But you just hope, you just sort of pray that you can make it work. Because if you can, that's an easy couple of kills. But that's what I was looking for, right? Okay, Tarek has the flash, but Tarek was playing bomb train. It's not like he was playing far back in alley, far back in back line, where he's going to be able to flash once they commit. On bomb train, how do you get the flash out and have it effective unless you're just underhand throwing it, right? It's so hard to do, just positioning-wise. I would even settle for throwing it straight up into the air, no underhand, just straight up there, because as it's going up in the air, they have two choices, right? They can either try and fight the people that are now coming around the corner, or they can try and turn around the boy being flashed. But, I mean, you, you can't expect to win the round, based on it, but you can get a couple of kills, right? So either, I, I would settle for even that, but um, I think the fact that they went around uh, the back just made it really rough. No, that was, yeah, it all worked out for Hellraisers there in that setup. Very nice. Ten rounds on the board now for Hellraisers on the T side of train. Nine for Optic, and Optic going for the buy. Doing a good job of holding on to their grenades as well. They weren't able to get too many of them, and so <laughs> they definitely do not want to be throwing them out too early. But that four-man setup once again here on the A site from Optic, it's a bit early in the half to start picking up on tendencies, but Hellraisers, they haven't really gone B yet, so it seems like Optic really just want to try and set up a hard counter and slam Hellraisers if they come out onto A with the default. There are a lot of teams playing this map that will have one dedicated B person that they just they just sort of leave there and, and, and they leave everything to them and they don't they don't really rotate people in unless the call is made, so I'd say that's that's a lot of uh, a lot of pressure to put on one person. And you, the way the Stanislaw is playing it, it's practically guaranteeing that if they go B, it will be a bomb plant. So Optic are sort of signaling with the setup. They're perfectly happy to retake this bomb side. They feel like we could do that all day. I love it. This could be very interesting, though. The rotation coming out now with that bomb. Rush is going to catch out Bondic, however, so no heroics from him this time. Angel looking to try and bring it back. Not going to happen. And with two players dead, that sets it up. Stanislaw with the incendiary. Perfectly time is going to stop Dead Fox in his traps. Rather, in tracks as if he stepped into a trap, we'll put it that way. Still, this is a round that Optic can just completely shut down. Boom, Stan is low with the triple kill. Incredible defense, and a nice save. I like that sound, that was, that was well made. Well, you've heard of like Coyote Ugly, right? <laughs> there we go. All right, so. No, so, I mean, I mean, apart from the fact that part of that push went, go, sort of went to hell for Hellraisers, because they lost two people over at the A-bomb site, 
you see how Stanislaw had that whole thing planned out. He's like, you know, you can come in here and get the bomb down. Even if all five push in, I will make sure you can't plant in the optimal position for what you want to do because of the Molotov. I'll pick up maybe one or two people, even just one will be fine, and then we'll retake the bomb site. That's a lot of confidence coming out. And we do want to remind you, the winner of this match is going to go into the major tournament. Both teams six rounds away from making that happen. The economy, though, for Optic is slightly better than it is for Hellraisers, who are still able to put to buy, a buy together. Dead Fox, where is he? Can he open up some of these rounds? He's still doing pretty well on the scoreboard, but we need him to open up some of these bomb sites for them. I it's, think it's that simple. It's starting to get to a case where, you know, Bonnick will have a couple of flashy rounds, Dead Fox will have a couple of flashy rounds, but there isn't, doesn't really feel like there's anybody who's consistent right now for Hellraisers, round after round, you know, going for the big plays, making the difference. And we'll see, I mean, Dead Fox, he has gone for the aggressive, well, I mean, the setup now on Alley, he's got that angle, looking to see if anybody's gonna peek him. But I don't think that Optic are gonna make that kind of mistake, give him that kind of chance. It's Angel instead, who's just stomping around over here, hoping to bait out a response. Yeah, trying for it. I like the pre-fire. There could have been someone in that corner. Stan is going to be tested again here, it looks like. Yeah, and backup is, I mean, with Tarek, he's boosted up on the hot right now. He's not that far away. Down to 55 seconds, and he's keeping on to that Molotov. He's very good at this. This is some discipline, because you could be tempted in any number of ways to, to put it down, especially once the grenades fly, and we'll see how quick he's going to be to use it, but... I kind of like the uh, the calm and just the confidence on Stan here. I love it too because this is like the evolution of NA play. You see that NA players threw out their incendiaries at the beginning of the round, just threw them away. Four players still had incendiaries at the end of the round pretty much here for Optic. So that's that evolution of their tactics, of their strategy, and that discipline coming into it. But five on five scenario here, and it is going to be the full retake for Optic because that bomb is getting planted. Zero out in the open, no help from his teammates. Bondic gonna be going down as well, it's mixed well with the double kill. And the bomb is finally being planted, but look at the charge in. Stanislaw just speeding the timing and Tarek helping out, taking down Dead Fox. It's all on Angel, he's gonna get shot right in the face. Stanislaw taking him out. And again, the, I, if you are this confident in your ability to retake the B-bomb side, mm -hmm. then why do anything else? Uh, if, if anyone in... The, if Optic make the major tournament, anyone who's going to play them on train should make a mental note right now that B bomb site can be taken, but you have to have a plan afterwards. And this is working really well. This push in as well from Stanislaw is really good. He, that, that is ballsy. Yeah, he's, he's playing a really good mental game right now. He's definitely not the strongest aimer on this team, but his intuition is quite high up there right now. All right, well, third tactical timeout used here from Hellraisers. And after a key round like that, the only issue being, unless they go for some kind of Tech 9 full buy, it's going to be a bit tough for them. This is going to be another round of eco coming in, or half buy at least. Go Hellraisers, go. Look nice at this. Setup. Yeah, and Virtus Pro and Navi are already in the major, so he's got the posters ready for it. He's even got the old Titan sticker. Sweet. OG fan right there. You know what I found at home? Uh, in a box that I had forgotten all about. Um, I found DreamHack. Uh, 2013 stickers, the one that Valve were giving out. Yeah, the, I found like a little box of those. So, I'll I'll post a picture at some point. I don't I don't think anyone remembered that they made those. That was before they had the pins and everything. They, they, yep. they the little stickers they handed out. Very weird stuff. Stiko low. They don't have any armor. I'm not sure there's much to talk about this round. Unless we get some some deagle action, we're just gonna we're just gonna you know relax, see what happens. Yeah, and start to speculate. I mean, right now, that's exactly what Hellraiser is wondering. Okay, we've gotten slammed twice on B now. Our A is kind of reliant on somebody going ham. We don't really have something to fall back on that is working consistently that we can count on, right? Like a strategy where everything is falling into place nice and neat. It seems like every time for Hellraisers, it's boiling down to Bondic or Deadbox going nuts. And so that's tough if you're Angel and if you're, uh, if you're Junta right now because you can't really just point and say, oh, this strat, this is what we're going to do because it works every time. So it's with maybe a couple of adjustments, right? They don't really have that. So yeah, Hellraisers are in a very tight spot, similar to what we saw from them earlier on train in this tournament. That T side right now, they're struggling to find a solution. Yeah, they. I mean, they absolutely are. I. I still think I don't know it's how easy it is. I mean, we obviously have the mini map, so we know really well what the B defense is like. Yeah. Uh, it could be much harder for Hellraisers to read that it's that it's mainly just Stan holding over there alone for a long time. But if they figure that out, I still think there are lots of ways they can they can try and abuse that. The problem is when they go for it, Hellraisers that B bomb site, they use almost all of their grenades to get in, 
and then Stan is fine with that. He's just gonna hang back for a long time, but they don't put any pressure on them, on him, you know? So they, they allow the full rotation to get in there while they're just hanging out in the back or off ticket just waiting and saying, that's fine, you know, get the bomb down. We're, we'll just regroup in the B bomb site and then we'll retake it. So I, I kind of wish they would try for a push Hellraiser where they actually go B and then they, they run Stan down. Just tr make sure he, no backer will get there in time. You know, put a Molotov into C connector here, make sure no one can get in and then try and go for it. Yeah, you have to. I mean, that's one of the key tenets that we've been talking about for years now when it comes to train. It's just you're going to take over B. You have to push aggro. You can't let the, T the CT side set up. You can't let them rotate in for free. You really have to go aggressive and get as close to connector as possible and find that kill. For now, at least, again, Zero is going to be clear. So Hellraiser's back into a default sort of setup now, basically, where Zero and Seiko are going to work as a duo to clear out Brown Halls, get a little map control over here, and at least not allow Optic to just have full control of this part of the map. And in the meantime, towards Alley, it was Angel and Dead Fox working as the duo to see if there was going to be any aggression over there from Optic. But Optic, it's the third option. It's Rush pushed into main right now. Yeah, and it, it, this is great. You know, they know Hellraisers are under a lot of pressure. They know they're going to try and find a way to, to switch out that strategy a little bit. Now, they are instead putting Rush in here, and that's going to throw them for a loop. There are three people around this corner, and you can tell Hellraisers are setting up for some smokes in the A yard. So we'll see if they can beat Rush. They are obviously going to check this corner. Everyone will do that all of the time. Question is, can Rush actually pick up a kill behind it? They're going to go in, and there's a flick mid air actually onto Rush. Angel going to pick up the kill. Tarek, next in line to pick it up. They line up for him right in front. Pistols out, and Tarek goes down. Still a two on three. Nafly and Stan left, and. The bomb is being planted right in front of Nafly. Stannis also there to maybe try and pick up the kill for the smoke. He's not going to chance it. So now the bomb is down. He's long range spray taking down Stiko and Zero dies as well. Oh no, Hellraisers, this is your round. What a save from Naf. Thought Stan was dead for sure. He still dies. Bonic still finds him, but he does damage to Bonic. That's the key play. 34 HP left on Bonic, and Naf catches him out, so he knows exactly where he's coming from now. Stuck behind main, and so Naf with the tap, just trying to get some kind of response out of Bondic. He still has a little bit of time to maneuver with here. He has a kit, and it's going to come down to Bondic going to step into the open. He had to at this point. You're counting down. You have that mental countdown when you hear the tap. You know, three, two, one, peak. And if they're on the bomb, boom, you get the kill. Otherwise, that's what happens. That's such a shame because actually Bondic up until that point, he'd been playing it pretty much perfectly. The peaks that he that he did to see if anyone was defusing were really, they were really sort of shoulder peaks and pixel peaks. They were really hard for for, uh, for Nafly to get the refrag there. But this time you can tell he committed to it. He said, all right, I think this is when you're defusing. I'm going to go for it. I, I think if he had kept peaking the other way, that would have been a, a pretty decent round for him. Yeah, it's just a tough call, right? You're, you're, you're trying to go for it at some point. Yeah, but I, I think he just lost his patience because he could have kept doing the other thing pretty much forever. I mean, there was um, the only time he can not do that is if Nafly has a smoke or something, you know? Then he's forced into it, but mm -hmm. he didn't. So he just, I think he just slightly lost his mind there at the end. What's going to be interesting is there was, this, there was a nade there blocking him off, but Angel's getting dangerously close. Loses the duel. Dead Fox in position, but he took some nade damage already. That's going to be an easy kill for Rush. Two for Rush, maybe? No, he's going to miss this follow up shot. Bondic, though. Excuse me, Bondic has to back off just in the nick of time to keep alive, but the damage is done. Four on two scenario now for Optic. And that just did not work at all. Angel trying to get clever with Dead Fox backing him, pushing through that smoke at Alley, but it just doesn't happen. Well, I'm glad we got a demonstration of what happens if you try and three-man push Alley and don't have the attention of the two people who are playing there. Because you see the crossfire that's being set up. Rush, when he takes over after Nafly has gone down, mm -hmm. it's so hard for Hellraisers to adjust their aim in time. Um, and they didn't have any smokes even to try and block out anybody. They just try to walk in there, sneak in there, which I mean can be a tactic to try and go without any grenades so that you don't know you're coming. This time it definitely didn't work out. Zero and Bondic are now in a lot of trouble and Hellraisers are almost definitely are running out of rounds here. Bondic, 11 health left and he's gonna be going down to Tarek, picking up another double kill and putting himself at 20. I mean, this is still a really close field in the in the kill departments. They are, I mean, Stan is at 19, Rush is at 19. All of them are doing a really good job. I mean, it just feels like we're seeing essentially a replay right now from Hellraisers and Godsent yesterday where Hellraisers just got completely shut out of the second half when they went over to T side. They weren't able to really achieve anything. The score was 16-11 versus uh, Godsent. Right now we're at 14-10. Optic in the lead on CT, fully bought up and Hellraisers with the buy of the pistols, Kevlar flash. I mean, this they have to just cross their fingers and hope at this point. They do get the aggro smoke down, and Angel might be able to catch somebody off guard. 
War is happening. Actually rushes around past Angel. He will turn around instead of the other way. That's a bit of a shame for Angel. He's going to be going down. Rush picking up one more frag on Steeko. And Tarek full on spray with the M4. He won. He wants the frags. He's going to go for it here. Little bit too greedy, but they will still win the round. I like it from, from Tarek though. I love it, man. You know what? That's that's it. You're so confident. Total yeah. lack of respect. Just going to get more of those eco frags. But this is going to be the last chance here for Hellraisers. Their backs are against the wall. More importantly, though, Optic one round away from a spot at the Major. And speaking of the wall, is the green wall, Semler. There we go. It's crushing Hellraisers right now. And this guy is certainly ready for it. He's got green inside of his PC. And he's got, what is this incredible speaker setup? I'm super jealous of that. That is that is really, really nice. 15-10 is the scoreline here, and the 26th round is coming up. Hellraisers can buy. They are in a tactical timeout that's just now running out, but um, everything rides one. on this. It's the last one as yeah. well. Even if they make it past this, even if they somehow manage to get around here, it's the last time that they will be able to actually have that 30-second that break window to converse with their coach and try and come up with a plan. Angel going for the buy. Let's see if he spends all of his money this time on the nades. Yes, he does. Good. And... and <laughs> If Optic win one more round, they don't just win the match, they go to the major tournament. Exactly. This is, I mean, for the, for these guys, especially considering the really short run they've had to, I mean, being one of the, the best teams in the world right now, they're really doing a good job beating some top level teams, taking out what, NIP yesterday, and uh, they beat Astralis on land in the past. Yeah, this is really impressive. We'll see how much further this is going to continue for them. But um, they've got five rounds through this, five match points. It's something about being in these studios, Anders. You know, just, just you know, something in the air. They I'm feel it. They're the E-League Season 2 champions. You're right. Oh, I thought you were going to I thought you were gonna turn this into like a Christmas rhyme. I was worried for oh, a second. It's like, don't do it. <laughs> don't no, do it. no, 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 no. Whoa. Oh. How? A valid question, Ow. given the circumstances. That's it. I mean, if he, he, he did a 180. If he'd have done a 360, I get it. He's channeling optic, you know? <laughs> now he's going <laughs> yes. to reach behind the table, pull out a Dorito. Can we get, some, can we get some wall glides in there? Crunch. <laughs> <laughs> so, a man down early on here for Hellraisers. What a terrible way to begin a round that uh, you really can't lose. Stanislaw and Mixwell are now in the B-bomb site, so a switch up in the optic defense. They can afford it anyway, because they're playing four versus five. It, it's hard to say what they're going to do just now. I'm still confused as to why they're not trying to get Dead Fox to get more openings with the AWP. He's been so good with it, but they're using everybody else before Dead Fox. This is just confusion now at this point. Yeah, that, like, literally confusion. They, 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 they're, 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 they seem a bit lost right now, but they are going to go for the push after all. It is delayed. Hellraisers, everything on the line now. And Tarek, ruthless, sprays down two. Bonnick and Styko will pick up a kill, but then Rush is still alive on the site. And he's going to get the final kill of this map. 16-10 scoreline in the end for Optic, and they're going through to the Major at the end of January. Uh, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Another another piece in the puzzle for this team, and 